A CNN poll average of ratings for Biden's handling of the presidency finds that 40% of Americans approve of the job he's doing. His numbers on the economy, gas prices, and inflation are even worse. In recent polls, Biden, after months of weighing the idea, threw his support behind the federal gas tax. So hopefully, President Biden can get something done, everybody. Now, the federal government does not take action soon, everybody, then millions of people are going to see a decrease in their monthly benefit checks. This is no joke. But top Democrats, including Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, are trying to pass a new spending bill, which would address the issue as soon as possible. So Democrats are eyeing a last-ditch plan to avert a spike in health care costs that could send further damage to their midterm prospects. This comes as Manchin has sent conflicting signals over continuing the health subsidies, expressing broad support while suggesting the financial aid be subject to means testing. A proposal being discussed currently by Congressional Democrats and party advisors in recent weeks aimed to temporarily extend the enhanced Obamacare subsidies that are part of the financial aid package that President Biden signed into law. These subsidies, everybody, are set to expire later this year. The plan under consideration would keep them in place for at least a few another years. Postponing the insurance premium hikes projected to hit roughly 13 million Americans. It would stop well short of making them a permanent part of the Affordable Care Act. Democratic leadership, everybody, has long hoped to renew the subsidies as part of the sweeping climate tax reform and prescriptions package. While Manchin has demanded a smaller bill that funnels half of its savings toward deficit reduction that's made a cheaper short-term extension perhaps the only viable option for salvaging the Obamacare aid, as long as desire for every program in the bill is made permanent. The search for a path forward on the issue comes amid rising Democratic anxiety over the potential political fallout if the enhanced subsidies expire. The subsidies passed as part of last year's America Rescue Plan that slashed the cost of health insurance for millions of people, with many lower income and enrollees paying close to nothing for their coverage. As more people become eligible for assistance, Obamacare enrollment surged to new highs. Nancy Pelosi has pressed the issue repeatedly in recent conversations about this and the reconciliation negotiations, including during a meeting last week with Biden and Democratic lawmakers, the health insurance agencies, and advocacy groups have ramped up their appeals to congressional leaders, casting it as especially critical given the broader economic uncertainty. But Manchin has been insistent that any deal struck includes significant deficit reductions. The American Rescue Plan just became law over a year ago. It provided a series of stimulus checks in 2021, and it served as a lifeline to many Americans' lives. And as people are struggling with the crisis, reducing food insecurity, and providing basic relief, the plan provided several significant tax cuts for working families. Millions of families were able to receive monthly advance payments of the child tax credit between July and December. Now, in order to receive the rest of the credit, these families must file their 2021 tax return. The Delaware Department of Finance recently created an online page where residents are able to check the status of their payments, having been created by House Bill 360. The 2022 Delaware Relief Rebate Program is a legislation that helps provide those who are eligible with a one-time direct check. Prices keep going up and wages can't keep up. So people are feeling stuck, stressed, and squeezed. So it's no surprise then to see the uh, Washington Post ABC poll number showing that more than nine in 10 Americans reported concerns about rising prices. Nine in 10 Americans. Agreed. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, let me go back, uh, Mr. Secretary, to an issue that Senator Manchin raised, that's lie heap. Uh, I'm pleased to say that the President slightly increased lie heap in the, his budget this year, but the reality is that energy prices are just exploding. Uh, in the past 12 months alone, the price of natural gas has increased by 22%, and the price of heating oil has increased by 70%. Uh, so, uh, would you support any type of supplemental funding to enhance the light heat so we can deal with this extraordinary increase in prices? Senator, we would support any effort to try to further fund light heat given the circumstances that we're in. Thank you very much. Uh, also, let me go back to the point you raised, which uh, I'm uh, pleased that you're moving aggressively. That's the 988 number. Uh, we all understand uh, that we're in a mental health crisis in the country. I hear that not only from my constituents, but as I visit troops around the globe, I hear it from our military personnel also. We just had a terrible incident of multiple suicides on one of our Navy carriers. Uh, 988 is a great idea, I think. Uh, I tend to do it. That's why I think that way. But anyway, uh, it's going to allow... Uh, 
the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Davidson, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, Chairman Powell, for coming here. And I also appreciate your book and the work. And, and frankly, just yet again, want to highlight the really heroic work that the Federal Reserve did uh, to create stable markets, uh, particularly in, in March and April of uh, 2020. Since then, of course, there have been a lot of uh, economic distortions, uh, one of which is the ongoing inability of uh, the Federal Reserve to stabilize its own balance sheet, which is now over $9 trillion. I appreciate Mr. Perlmutter uh, highlighting some of the good news. And frankly, I'm positive that he has previously operated a lemonade stand because you can always turn something good out of the lemons. Um, but uh, so there, there's not that there's no good news, but the concern is that in the long term, this has come at the expense of sound money. So just over a year ago, uh, I talked to you about sound money and is the U.S. dollar represents sound money because many of us anticipated that inflation was not transitory and uh, that, that the uh, quantity theory of money might have some impact on uh, inflation. So in light of the fact that we have seen uh, you know, substantial change in the rate of inflation now, versus what was showing up then, but was anticipated. You still think that the U.S. dollar is sound money? And uh, either way, what are the threats to the U.S. dollar as sound money? The U.S. dollar is sound money, yes. Um, the threats to the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency uh, really um, in the near term are, are uh, to, to, to displace the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency, if that's your question, you would need to have, you need to be a very attractive place to hold large amounts of reserves. It's really different than that because we are, we are probably still going to be the, the reserve currency since the world grades on a curve. And frankly, the planet's never had this much debt since World War II. So all of the countries around the world did similar things. We weren't even, we were, you know, the discipline of the Bretton Woods era was gold. Uh, I don't know that there's magic just in gold, but there is magic in discipline. So if you look at sound money being defined by a stable store of value, uh, an efficient means of exchange, and a trusted record of an account, you know, you've at least taken some dings on store of value. Um, and so as you've seen people uh, decide to filter transactions and develop technology and regulatory frameworks, that are intended to be able to filter transactions, it's not as trusted or efficient as a means of exchange or a record of account. And so those, those kinds of things, not so much do we do okay on the curve, but is it truly sound? 